Hello everybody and welcome to this guide and tutorial for the golden shot. Difficulty level is hard and I'm going to give you 10 shots on to help you to achieve one of the chests at least uh, with the shot or the shots that you are going to take. Before it's time to go over the guide, uh, please hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Then you will also get a notification every time there is a new live stream or a new video. For those of you that want to invest in training session packages or text guide packages, check out patreon.com slash golfclashtommy, link in the description down below. Last but not least, if you do like the video, please take your time and hit the thumbs up before you go. So, golden shot hard. Which one we're gonna play? We're gonna play hole and number two from the recent tournament. One on the Vineyard Acres that was also in the Vintage Open tournament. A tough par three, and the reason this one is so tough is due to the bounce being not that consistent all the time, which means that we do need to find a spot and we do need to help ourselves with side spin to get our ball straight at the pin all the time. I feel that I found a very good spot and uh, with a little bit of luck as always, we might gonna get the hole in one. The chest that we can win is the obsidian chest for the hole in one. We do have the amber chest for the yellow uh, ring and the crimson chest for the red one. Aqua chest for the light blue one and the cobalt chest for the darker blue one. We are going to play with the golden long iron every shot. Doesn't matter if you have headwind, tailwind, crosswind. We're gonna play with the golden long iron. Accuracy 66 and also a, a 2.1 ball guideline. We're gonna have the golden ball which has a power one and side spin two. For those of you that you want to find more questions about the golden shot, you press the question mark, you will get to the frequently asked questions about the golden shot. So, take a look at the screen, you can see this white uh, little thing here in the bottom. That says golden long iron, that's the club we're gonna play. And the adjustment that we're gonna make every single time, it's maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. We're playing this ball one downhill so the ball is going to be affected a little bit more by the wind. If you're not using any type of calculator or something like that, then you go with 1.65 per ring. That's the same as maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment with the golden long iron. So we are gonna now go and I'm going to do like this and we're gonna do like this. We're gonna take up something that I would like to call the landing position. A landing position is super important and try to replicate. First and foremost, a key ingredient with this landing position is that you for every single shot need to add 1.5 bars backspin. That's the start. You do that, then you find the landing position. And you can see here that we do have the top right of the white ring just by the darker rough by the bunker. With the blue ring approximately one third into the rough uh, to the right. And also the white ring down into the rough on the left. But once finding this, we do want the ball guideline pointing with a second bounce on the fringe pointing straight at the pin. I know a lot of stuff to remember. Please don't spend the, all the 30 seconds trying to find this spot. Try to replicate it in as best way possible. And once you then are done or like close to done, then just focus on adjusting your shot. So we're gonna come back to the landing position here in the end as well. And when now, when it's time now for checking out the video and we're gonna go 10 shots, I'm going to explain how my adjustment is and my thought process. And then in the end, we're gonna summarize. As always, 5.3 headwind. And once uh, as a start, we're gonna start by looking for the landing position. Having 1.5 bar backspin, even though it's headwind, Looking for the landing position with a second bounce on the fringe with, as you see, white ring by the darker rough on the right, uh, like by the bunker there, combined with the blue ring approximately one third into the rough. Then we're going to adjust. Uh, we're going to adjust four, uh, sorry, uh, we're going to adjust 3.1, 3.2 rings with this adjustment with a 5.3 win. 
Hit the ball perfect, which is super important. You can see we're going a little bit short, straight at the pin, but we're going a little bit short here. And that is something that I will also come back to with this in the summarizing in the end, that we cannot use one and a half bar backspin in headwind. A couple of Falcon cards, and most importantly, the Berserkers! Same type of wind here now. Can we maybe think about it now in a better way you can see we're using still one and a half bar could have used a little bit less uh, I don't mm, mm, but still pointing with a second bounce on the fringe pointing straight at the pin we have a 6.3 in wind which is going to be very close uh, to four rings <laughs> so we're gonna go three and a half 3.7 approximately in rings I'm gonna hit it perfect you see I'm not using any type of curl and I do like to stay away from curl all the time due to the fact that we are having you know the curl will always be hard to replicate side spin and backspin top spin and um, of course the landing position we can replicate but we cannot replicate curl to 100% all the time very close there as well but we still went a little bit short so we need to remove a little bit when it comes to um, when it comes to using uh, the backspin here same type of wind again once again we're gonna have a 6.3 in headwind a little bit more crosswind this time though and you can see here now, and that's kind of a reason I want to bring it here as well, like even though I know we're gonna play a little bit less than 1.5, uh, I don't do. So in this case, I actually push up my landing position a little bit. You can see I'm not having the same landing position and that's gonna mess up it, uh, not not gonna mess it up completely, but it's going to mess up the, the, the process that we're having. So always pick the same type of landing position because otherwise we cannot really rely on, on the ball acting the same way as we do. Good shot though, but once again we had a different landing position which is something that I do not like even though the result became good. So shot number four and now we're gonna have so more crosswind. I would say this one is a tiny bit of headwind but mostly crosswind here. One and a half bar backspin. Now we have the correct type of spin. One and a half bar backspin. I'm gonna try to find the same landing position here with the ball guideline in the center of the like the second bounce in the center of the fringe. But once again, I push up my target a little bit here again. Mm. So this one is still not gonna act as we want to. And once again, the importance of using the correct landing position is. Yeah, it's super important. But still going with the same type of structure here, hit the ball perfect, and we're gonna roll down towards the pin, but we miss it right, and we don't know if it's because we had a different landing position or not. But now it's time to go back to using the landing position that we are we're looking for here. So 5.3, and we're gonna have some headwind. And for those of you that maybe wonder, yes, we're gonna have some tailwind here as well in the end. So look at this. Look at this. We do have to put, we do here in headwind to try to use one and a half bar backspin. I try to use, in this case, a higher landing position. And when you do have basically straight headwind or tailwind, I can be okay with that. But the easiest way is to find a spot, replicate it, and then go from there. So you can see here we bounce with one and a half bar backspin. We're gonna come in pretty nicely here and get the yellow ring. So it works. So it works. But once again, we did choose a different landing position than I showed in the beginning so the importance is the landing position that i displayed in the beginning of the video is the one that i do want you to go with even though i do have a different landing position here and it worked but in straight cross uh, sorry straight tailwind and headwind then it's uh, much easier to use a different spot because we're still gonna bounce straight forward and you know, like yeah straight forward with crosswind that's not gonna be the case so Back to finding the landing position here now. 
And the thing that I'm going to do here is that I'm going to add side spin to compensate for the push that I'm going to get from the crosswind. Something that I'm going to come from in the end here as well. One and a half bar backspin aiming for the middle of the fringe. Two bar side spin to the right. And then once again, as said on screen, 1.65 per ring or maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. We're coming in here, taking the red ring. We are a little bit too much to the left side of the pin, which gonna be meant that we do need to compensate a little bit more for that shot in terms of side spin. So, now we do have, a, I think we have four shots left to go here. We're gonna have 7.6 crosswind slash tailwind here, okay? Then we're gonna still start. Uh, we're gonna start with using two bars of backspin here, and two bars of backspin is something that we do need, want to use when we're having when we're having crosswind and tailing together. But you can see here that I'm adding some side spin as well. I'm adding one and a half bar side spin, which is, in my opinion, a little bit too much. In this case, a little bit too much. A little bit too much in side spin, but the ball is gonna hit hit itself. Not hit itself, but we're gonna hit it perfect. We're gonna come in and gonna be very, very close here to the pin. But I'm going to come to why I think that was a little bit too much in terms of overcompensation. Because in that case, I didn't play it max numbers. So they played medium numbers. And medium numbers, maximum numbers, gonna be a slight difference. And then we're gonna come in a little bit more to the right, and then have a problem with the, uh, with the correct bounce there again. One and a half bar backspin. And now we're gonna find the landing position. Look here now. I'm looking for the landing position with the ball guy line pointing straight at the pin. Second bounce on the fringe, and then we're gonna adjust. After this, gonna add side spin. So I'm looking for the landing position, then side spin. Two and a half bar side spin with this type of crosswind. You remember, I played with two bars before, still missed a little bit left. And then we're gonna play with two and a half now. I'm gonna play 4.2 rings. Hit the perfect. Get in! So close on the other side, but that's a good shot and I will take that. See if can work in the hole in one here in the end. And once again, we do have all the shots that we do take some type of chest and that's the most important part that we do get chests for the shots that we're taking. So now we do have tailwind crosswind from like right to left. Look for the landing position. First, we're gonna add 1.5 backspin because that's our initial starting point. So, white ring by the darker rough there on the right. And now you can see once I found find my landing position, I'm, I, I'm adding the correct spin, which is two bars back spin with then one bar side spin to the right. Adjusting max numbers, as it says on the screen, 1.65 per ring. Bouncing, coming in here nicely, get in! So close! Super close! Well, I'll take it now. Let's go and see what we can get in the amber chest here. Some backbone cards. The extra mile. The quarterback. The hornet. Kingfisher. That's awesome because that is one of the few clubs that I haven't unlocked. Okay, everyone, that was all the 10 shots, and I hope you learned something by that. We're gonna summarize it now here in the end. Have in mind, first and foremost, that you see in some of the shots that I choose a different landing position, and that is like for two reasons. First, to show how much big of a different effect it can have, and also try to explain why we do want to have one landing position. Like, I don't agree with the fact that some players are showing that we can have this landing position, this, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then of course, they're going to be very hard to replicate the shot. So we are going to uh, 
go and use this landing position. Once again, I'm gonna repeat it to you. White ring by the rough on the uh, top right. We do have the blue ring approximately one third into the rough on the right. And then we do have the white ring on the left into the rough there. One and a half bar backspin is gonna be your starting point. Because you do want to find this spot with one and a half bar backspin with the second bounce on the middle of the frame pointing straight at the hole. I'm gonna take that one away and I'm going to add this one. Hopefully this is going to help. In Tailwind we're gonna play 2.2 bars backspin. Now I'm talking straight Tailwind and no side spin. Once again we start with 1.5 bar backspin with the landing position as we wanted to. Then we add to 2.2 bar backspin. Tailwind with crosswind, two bars backspin, one and a half bar right spin with right to left wind. No side spin with left to right wind. So that ball has affected differently. So have that in mind. Crosswind, one and a half bar backspin with 2.5 a left spin. Uh, Sorry, with 2.5, and that should be um, be uh, be right spin. 2.5 right spin. So RS, not LS. RS with right to left win. One bar side spin with left to right win. So one bar side spin to the left with uh, with left to right win. Headwind slash crosswind. 1.2 bars backspin with two uh, and with. Uh, uh, and that's going to be with two bars of um, uh, 1.2 bars of backspin, one and a half bar right spin with right to left win. No side spin with left to right win. I don't know where the two bars backspin came from, so you just ignore that. So 1.2 bars backspin, one and a half bar right spin with right to left win. No side spin with left to right win. Headwind, one bar backspin, no side spin. Oh my god, that note was uh, pretty, pretty weird. So. Thank you so much once again to sh for checking out the golden shot. Difficulty level is hard. Let me know in the comment section below what chest you got and also what you got in the chest. Good luck in the golden shot.